Now on Mildly Entertaining, The King Who Became a Pirate. If you need to blink, do so now. For what I'm about to tell you is mildly entertaining. Eric of Pomerania, aka King Eric of Sweden, King Eric VII of Denmark, and King Eric III of Norway was one of the most notable Scandinavian monarchs of the 14th and 15th centuries. And for the last 10 years of his life, he was a pirate. He would plunder the merchant trade ships in the Baltic Sea. He succeeded his adoptive mother, Margaret I of Denmark, and was the first king of the Nordic Kalmar Union, which united Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and portions of Finland under one king. Later, he was declared Eric the 13th of Sweden, the number figured by counting backwards from Eric the 14th of Sweden, whose number in turn was a part of the legendary history of the country. Eric was born in 1382 as Bogslaw in Rugenwald, called Darlo today. Located in Poland, Eric the future king was the only grandson of King Valdmar the fourth of Denmark, and he was also a descendant of Hakon, the fifth of Norway, and don't forget Magnus the third of Sweden. Olaf, the second Hakonson, was the king of Denmark since his father's death in 1376. Olaf became king when he was only five years old, that is until 1387 when he died suddenly and unexpectedly at 17. With no descendants to take the throne, Hakon's mother, the Queen of Norway, appointed Eric as the true heir of Sweden, and he was then able to succeed to the throne. The councils of the Scandinavian countries, the Rings Rad, selected Queen Margaret as all-powerful lady and mistress of the Kingdom of Denmark's regent. Just a short year later, she was declared the reigning queen by the Norwegians. Bogslaw went to Denmark in 1389 and his name changed to Eric in an attempt to sound more Nordic. In September of that year, the seven-year-old Eric was recognized as the King of Norway. Meanwhile, over in Sweden, the nobles forced the King Magnus IV to renounce his throne. Afterwards, the nobles led by the greatest landowner in Sweden, Bo Johnson, encouraged Duke Albert of Mecklenburg to take the Swedish throne. Unfortunately for them, soon after he took over, Albert tried to reduce the size of the large estates from the very people who gave him the throne. Obviously, they quickly turned against him. Norway attempted to invade Sweden, but Albert victoriously fought off the invasion. This didn't gain him any sympathy from the Swedish nobles, though probably because he tried to steal their land. In 1388, they secretly wrote to Margaret asking for help to get rid of King Albert in return for making her regent. Not wasting any time, Margaret sent an army to Sweden to attack King Albert, while the nobles of the kingdom gathered their own army against him. The armies of King Albert were beaten in 1389. However, it took Margaret an additional six years until 1395 to force Albert's supporters out of Stockholm. In case of her death, Margaret made preparations for the three kingdoms. She wanted the kingdoms to be unified and peaceful to each other and wanted her grandson Eric as the heir. Modern sources describe Eric as an industrious, visionary, and intelligent person with a strong character. He was charming and well-spoken, although he had a hot temper and lacked in a diplomatic sense. Most of his reign was affected by the conflicts he had with the Counts of Sautenberg and Holstein. Margaret was successfully prevailing over South Jutland, though when Eric tried to subdue it, he chose to do it by war instead of diplomacy, which was a failure from the very beginning. Even though he showed himself as energetic and steady, he also showed the lack of his negotiating ability. The war that Eric started slowed the Danish economy and also prevented unification of the North. In 1429, King Eric introduced his most notable act during his reign, the introduction of sound dues. 
sound dues were a toll for the use of ore sound, a strait between the Danish and Swedish border. This toll gave a large stable income for his kingdom and considerably increased the economy. The Baltic powers, however, were not happy with the toll and heated the relationships with the Hansetic cities, which didn't really matter as they were already at war. From 1426 to 1435, he fought the German Hansetic League and Holstein. In 1428, the Hansetic and Holsteiners attacked Copenhagen. The king departed the city, entrusting his wife, Queen Philippa, to defend the capital. In the 1430s, the United Scandinavian Kingdom started rebelling against King Eric. Not only farmers and workers, but nobility supported the revolts and worked together on weakening the king's power. King Eric gave Sigurd Johnson the title of Drosset, that he could rule Norway in Eric's name. The king then isolated himself in Gotland, where he stayed for 10 years making and enjoying his living by piracy. He would plunder merchant ships in the Baltic Sea. After 10 years in Gotland and being a pirate, Eric returned to his Pomerania, where he died in 1459. To my current subscribers, thank you for being a part of this community. Please remember to help me grow by liking and sharing. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe to Mildly Entertaining, the channel that finds entertaining subjects you may not have heard of and shares it with you. Previously on Mildly Entertaining, the Japanese Gas Mask Island, an island where carrying a gas mask is required by law. Click here to see the video.